examples are given by Yukti Deepika, right? Like he says, Mano Anava Manasaha Anavasthana. Like for example, we are going to the market and though our eyes come into contact with the chariot standing on the left side, but we don't notice the chariot. And if somebody asks whether you saw a chariot, we saw, we are not certain. Because mind was not there. So that is why there is the importance. That is why this entity called mind had to be introduced into the system. Right? Merely self is not enough, and merely organs are not enough. Mental faculty has to be introduced. And this is accepted by, uh, by almost all the Indian schools of thought, except the Charvakas. Then he says, Sokshyat, things may be too subtle. We are unable to see things things are too subtle. For example, an eye surgeon who noticed that there was a cataract and it needed to be operated in my eyes could not himself see with his own eyes but had to use a certain instrument. I can't see the cataract in my eyes. I can feel the pain or its effect but I can't say whether it's cataract. You see the difference. Sometimes we confuse one category with another category. Right? Merleau-Ponty, Maurice Merleau-Ponty, wrote a book called Phenomenology of Perception. I wonder whether you have heard of him. Please give me your attention. I wonder whether you have heard of him. He gives you an example. I co how consciousness works. He says you are sleeping. You are deep asleep. An insect comes and bites, say, for example, at the middle finger of your left foot. Bites at the middle finger of your left foot. My heart ki tisri angli par koj insect jo hai koi keeda jo hai kaat leta hai and you feel the pain where does your hand go towards the back in sleep you are sleeping precisely at that very finger itself you don't confuse between the second and third finger say it, it might have been the second finger let me scratch my second finger but the pain continues. So do, you don't have to draw inference where it could have been, you know, bitten. Which finger could have been bitten? How do you infer? By opening the brain? <laughs> By opening the brain? And then seeing the x-ray? X-ray won't show anything. Am I right? MRI can diagnose what's the problem. It cannot show your pain, you are being sad. It's not the brain which is sad, it's me who is sad. It's me who is sad. There may be a corresponding change, you know, in my structure, in my brain structure, a corresponding change. My sadness may get registered in my brain. That is understandable. Just as my anger, inner anger, which is an internal state, can manifest itself in my bodily behavior. Right? Similarly, he says, socks we are, there can be things which are very subtle and you can't see them. For example, the atoms. Atoms. Or anything going on, 
inside my body. They are subtle for me, at least they are for me subtle. I don't always see by, I don't always look at my kidney or lungs or heart or this liver. I have to get them tested to see how they function. I don't know how they are functioning. Though there are external symptoms, if all is going well, there are no problems, then I conclude probably there is nothing wrong with me. So software, we are not able to see certain things through sense organs because they are too subtle. Vyavadhanas, or because there is obstruction, because there is obstruction. I, I can be able to see the sound of the drum coming from afar, from afar, say about a furlong, but not be, not be able to see a pot which is which is behind this wall, which is behind this wall, because there is an obstruction. The wall is not able to obstruct my perception of the sound, but it is able to, pro it is able to obstruct, to cause impediment to my perception of the port, which is on the other side of the wall, Vyavadhana impediment of stick. Do you follow? Hmm? Anybody who disagrees with this proposition? Abhibhavad. Or I may simply be dazzled when I'm driving, as I often do sometimes, as I sometimes do. If the car is coming from the opposite side and it's, it's lights, are too dazzling. I'm unable to see what's going on, what's going in my front. I'm too dazzled. Or sun, for example. If I'm seeing towards the sun, I may be dazzled. Dazzled enough to see any object which is quite close to me. Abhibhava. I'm overpowered. Overpowered. Hota ka nahi? Hota ka nahi? Samana Biharacha. And then he says, Samana Iharaj. If a thing of the similar kind. If a thing of the similar kind gets mixed up in a group, in a group or in a collection, suppose I take a drop of water, I take out a drop of water from this glass. and put it back in the same glass. Can you find that drop of water? But this is perhaps not a very good illustration. I come to a better illustration. Suppose there's a, there's a collection of bricks. Bricks, you are constructing a building. There's a collection of bricks. I take out a brick. I take out a brick and run throw it back into the collection. Do you think I'll be able to find it? Unless I, I mark it, I give it, I mark it specially, put a mark on it, some black or green or red, some sign, oh, it is the brick, this is the brick which I took away, unless it would get lost. 
samana viharaj there is a samavesh if something of the similar time similar type is thrown back into collection it can't be found out Huh? Abhihar. Samana abhihar. Samana means like things. Samana abhihar is, you know, it cannot be exactly translated. It's a, it's a slightly quaint Sanskrit. Quaint Sanskrit. Samana abhihar is. Like rice, for example. Right? One. Uh, one piece of rice you take from you take out from the plate and put it back can you find find it out again can you find find it again samana <laughs> vihara they are all of the same type shall we proceed so because of these reasons because of these reasons there is a need for anumana now comes the important karika this is karika number which is this karika please show me yes after this eighth which is the eighth karika yes sokta tad anupalabdir na abhavat karyata tad upalabdi mahad adi tachya karyam prakriti virupam sarupam I, I don't remember whether I uh, have conveyed this to you that Ishtar Krishna Samsakarika tries to argue for every proposition that it makes in explaining, in giving an account of the world in its generality. Metaphysics can give only a general account of the world, of reality, not a specific account. It cannot give an elaborate account of the specific details of everything. Just as not one scientist or not the whole lot of scientists put together can tell me what are those electrons or protons of which I am constituted. They cannot tell me. They can only tell me the general conclusion that I am made up of electrons or protons or whatever or whatever they name to uh, give to the subtlest particles the fundamental particles they can't tell me they can't tell me why i am miserly no scientist can tell me if i am miserly why i am miserly can any scientist tell No scientist can tell me why I suffer from insomnia, if I suffer from insomnia. They can treat my insomnia and they can say that there is a certain disorder in my nervous system. That is only a physical, not a cause, but a reflection. That is only a physical reflection. But why is my nervous system like that? Who will tell me? I wait for some such scientist and doctor to come and tell me why I am predisposed, why I feel disposed to behave in certain manner, in certain, certain, certain circumstances. Why I have a weakness for certain things and why, why I have the strength to resist certain other temptations. My 
my theory of karma can tell you. Theory of karma can tell you. Science can't tell you. Theory of karma has to be carried to its logical conclusion. If in this life we see some of our actions bearing fruit, how can we theoretically in principle deny that any deed or action done, done by me has to bear fruit sometime or the later and sometimes mean perhaps in the next birth if not in this birth. How can we stop the causal series arbitrarily? No. All your actions or the fruits they can, they bear or do not bear are confined to this life. Why? This is a very arbitrary ruling. But theory of karma says that if a person has, been, has murdered someone and has not, has not faced, uh, has not faced uh, the consequences of his crime in this birth, through the society in which he lives, through I mean the judicial system which operates in that society, then he will bear the fruit in some other life of his crime. He will. It's like having a cup of tea. It must leave its impact. Sanskaras. So if one action can lead to a fruit, another action, too bad an action, will lead to another kind of consequence. Nothing goes without giving us a fruit, bad or good, unpleasant or pleasant. Now he says, Sokshya tad anupalabhir na abhava. Now he has explained that certain things are inaccessible to us perceptually because they are subtle. Sokshyat, he has said that. So he says, tad anupalabdhir na abhava, prakriti, prakriti, pradhana, mool prakriti, is anupalabdhir, tad anupalabdhir, tasya anupalabdhi. There is inaccessibility of prakriti through the senses, because prakriti is too subtle. Na abhavat, not because prakriti is non-existent. Anupalabdhi and abhava are different. Things may be inaccessible. They may be unknowable. They may yet exist, but they may be unknowable. Scientists hypothesize that certain particles, what they call fundament, fundamental particles, exist. And yet they admit they are not apprehensible, they are not knowable. Isn't it? Am I right or not? They can't see them. And yet they must exist. Because without them, an explanation of the physical universe becomes impossible. Similarly, Sankhya says that though, though Prakriti is inaccessible because of its subtleness, because of its being subtle, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, it is not real. Na abhava. anupalabdhir. What is this? Why this change? Okay. Sokshma tad anupalabdhir na abhava. Karyataha tad upalabdhi. He says, Prakriti after all is knowable. It's not perceptually knowable because of it, it's too subtle. And I have already said, Ishwar Krishna says, that there are things which are invisible because of their subtleness. So Prakriti is invisible because of its subtleness, 
not because it is non-existent, because it, its existence can be known through karya, through its effect. Karya taha, through its effect. Karya means vikar or effect or consequence. Right? Just as in Nyaya Vasheshika, the Nyaya Vasheshik thinkers like Odeyan, for example, give the existence of the world as an effect, the argument for concluding to the existence of God as a creator. Because there is an effect, there must be a cause. And because causal series, regress, regress, regressive series must stop somewhere, there must be a first cause, and that is God. And he must be omnipotent and omniscient. Karyataha tad upalabdi. Because we see the manifest karya. What are those? He enumerates them. Where is that? Mahadari Tachakaryam Prakriti Virupam Sarupam Cha Mahadari Tachakaryam Mahat Ahankar etc. are the effects tat, of that, of what? Of Prakriti. And we see, that is, we feel, we know. We are aware that there are manifest entities, manifest tattvas like mahat, etc., which are prakriti, virupam, sarupam, cha, which are like prakriti as well as unlike prakriti, which are like prakriti as well as unlike prakriti. Sarupam, similar, same character, same character. Rup does not mean akar or form, same character, same features, same characteristics, same qualities, so on. Virupam, but are also different. Like, if I am the, like, I, as a progeny of my parents, am somewhat like them and somewhat unlike them. Right? Somewhat like them, some features I share with them, certain features I do not share with them. And features does not mean merely physical appearance, but also mental, intellectual features, etc. Right? Nobody in my family earlier studied philosophy. I came into philosophy via grammar. I had grammar in my MA Sanskrit. And I was not bad in grammar. Now, of course, I'm very bad in grammar. But at that time, I was not very bad in grammar and scored fairly well. But then my interest shifted to philosophy just in a course of two years. I happened to study some Western philosophical text and it changed my mind. It was on ethics, though I'm not a man of ethics. My areas are mostly metaphysics, philosophy of mind, philosophy of religion, etc., or epistemology, not ethics. But it was that ethics book by a Western scholar which aroused that philosophical curiosity, philosophical instinct, a desire to study philosophy in me. Not philosophical instinct, a desire to study in philosophy in me. I became attracted to philosophy. You never know. Why that happened? Darwin said it's all contingent. Chance. How many things can happen by chance? 
how many things can happen by chance? Once I was listening to a leading scientist, a philosopher of science at Delhi University. I don't remember his name. So after his brilliant lecture ended, uh, I felt provoked by a desire, by Jigyasa, to desire to know the exact implications of the Darwinian of the evolution theory. I said, would you say that had circumstances been different, evolution might have taken a different course and man may not have come from the apes. And man may not have come from the apes. If things are happening by chance, then it's possible that man may not have come from the apes. Then from which animal might it have come? I asked him whether there is a certain pattern or order in evolution or not. Tell me that. And if it's a pattern, it means it's an intelligible pattern. There's a logic behind it. And logic means there's a design behind it. There's a design behind it. So St. Thomas' argument for God from on the basis of design argument is not a bad argument. Or Nayabhasheshika's argument is not a bad argument. It will not be a completely successful argument, but it gives you some idea of how we reach the conception of the first cause, whether it be matter, in case of Sankhya Yoga, Sankhya especially, or God in case of Nyaya Vaisheshi or some other thinkers. Design arguments. See, things are so incomprehensible that we are unable to understand ourselves. Why we behave in certain manner in certain circumstances. This is evident from the very fact that we later on regret that we might have behaved differently. But why do we behave? Why did we, why did we behave the way we did? We don't know. Though at that time we, we felt helpless and we thought we, we could behave only, only in that way. But Sankhya says, whether you accept the Sankhya scheme or not, Sankhya says creation has to follow certain logic. And now scientists are veering around to the view that this need not be the first or last creation. This my scientist son tells me. They are veering around to the view. This one, this may not be the first or last creation. It's possible the whole creation once it dissolves. Dissolves there. Abs is absorbed back into where? From where it came. But from where it, uh, did it come? Some potential thing, some potential matter. Nobody knows. In his good book, Why I Am Not a Christian and Other Essays, Why I Am Not a Christian and Other Essays, in his book, Button Russell says that the idea of beginningless universe, that is, the Hindu idea, or the Buddhist idea, or the Jain idea of the beginningless universe is not all that, is all that uh, 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 meaningless. He doesn't say the Hindu idea. He says the idea of a beginningless universe is not that foolish talk. There can be beginningless universes. And that is where he distinguishes himself from the Christian idea 
of creation have a definite meaning. And this creation being the first creation and the last creation. And if it's not a first creation, if creation is beginningless, then it is possible that creation is endless. It's possible. I'm not saying it's endless. I'm saying it's possible that it is endless. So, and that is why we say anadi vasana, anadi vasana, a subtle linga sharir. which begins with the first moment of creation and lasts up to the end of the creation. Karyataha tat upalabdhi. Because we see the effects in the form of manifest tattvas, so we conclude to the existence of some cause which is like the tattvas and also unlike the tattvas. We talk of genetic things, which means an effect like can, can be like its cause. Isn't it? So. So. Why do we talk of genetics at all? If, if an effect, or of course, in theory, an effect need not be like its cause. But at the same time, the possibility can't be ruled out that an effect can be like its cause. At least some effects can be like its cause. Isn't it? I'm like my parents, for example. I'm their effect. Where is the next? Mahadadi Tachaka. Yes, this we have done. Okay. Let's move ahead. We have time still. Is there important thing to, to be done here? No, not. Yes, yes. We come to third Arnik, third chapter. says ah the very first line is ah astam tavat vai rupa sarupa chanta let this talk about vai rupa similarity or dissimilarity between cause and effect remain on one side karyam idam eva tavat mahadadi parikshisham parikshish Mahadadi Parikshishyamai. We will now investigate into the nature of Mahadadi. Mahat, etc. Mahadadi Tattvas. And then he asks, Kim Prak Utpatte Asti Nasti. Whether the effect exists before it's being an effect or not. Prak utpatti, whether the effect exists before its production or not. Prak utpatti nasti. He says, Kuta sanshaya itiche syan mitam. He says, Why are you asking this question? He comes to next line. Uchyate, asti sanshaya vakasha. There's a room for doubt. There's a room for challenging the proposition. Any proposition on this. Kasmat, acharya viptatipatti. Because acharyas, thinkers, disagree on this question. Prag utpatte karyam asad iti acharya kanad akshapad prabhyatayo manyante. There are acharyas like kanad and akshapad. Kanad, the first 
philosopher of the Vaisheshik school, first known philosopher of the Vaisheshik school, and Akshapat Gautam, the first known philosopher of the Nyaya school. They believe manyante, they believe, they opine that prag utpatte karyam asat, that an effect does not exist before it's coming into being. Matlab ye hai ki karya ki karya banane se pehle satta nahi hai. Aam ka jo fal hai, wo fal banane se pehle uski satta nahi hai. Samchi ye maanta hai ki aam ka jo fal hai, uski pehle se satta vidyaman hai, बीज के रूप में बीज में इसलिए आम के बीज से आम का ही फल निकलता है खरबूजे का नहीं निकलता ठीक है द इफेक्ट एग्जिस्ट प्रायर टू इट्स बीइंग कॉल्ड एन इफेक्ट इन अ लेटेंट फॉर्म इन इट्स कॉज बट Akshapad and Kanad believe otherwise. This is, these are two views. They agree on the same point. That effect is always a new creation. That is why they call Arambhavad. Arambhavad. With an effect coming into being, we have a new beginning. We have a new beginning. Sad asat iti bauddha. The Buddha says it exists and does not exist. It exists also and it does not exist also. It exists because there is pratita samudpad. It does not exist because every moment, moment is different. Every moment is different. So how can it, it exist? It, ex it exists because there is causal, what's called, you know, uh, 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 just a moment. Yes, dependent origination. Dependent origination. Yes, depend. I was missing the word. Though I very recently completed an article on Nagarjuna and sent it for consideration for publication, and I'm missing on missing on certain things. Sorry. So dependent origination. That things arise, originate, dependent depending upon certain causes and conditions. Those causes and conditions are necessary. And yet they, so it means that they exist before that. And yet they do not exist because what comes into being is entirely, it, it comes at a moment which is entirely different from the previous moment. Naibasat Na asad iti anne. And some people believe naivasat na asad is neither existent, is neither existent nor non existent. Tasmad upapanna sanchaya. Therefore, doubt arises. Questions arise on this very important issue. Ordinary man would again say, Why are you wasting your time banging your head on problems which do not exist? But problems exist. Science faces this problem. Any inquiry which is systematic, any inquiry which is systematic, faces problems. Only haphazard thinking does not face problems. It finds convenient pragmatic solutions. 
चलो ये कर लो ये भी ठीक है वो भी ठीक है एंड वी आर एबल टू पास लाइफ स्पेंड लाइफ हैप्पी हैप्पी बिगिनिंग हैप्पी एंडिंग बट एज मैक्टेगर सेड आई एम कोटिंग फ्रॉम मैक्टेगर द पर्सन ऑन होम आई एम इन एबल टू राइट ए बुक ही सेज मेटाफिजिक्स by metaphysics i mean a systematic study of the ult- systematic study of the ultimate nature of reality he says why do you he raises the question himself ki why do you talk of metaphysics why not talk of physics he says yes i grant that physics also in- inquires makes a systematic inquiry into the nature of reality but to the extent physical sciences think that all reality is only material reality this thinking is a metaphysical statement and needs to be examined whether all reality is exhausted in the physical aspect of it whether there is no reality apart from or in addition to physical reality so we have to examine consciousness for example mcticket believe that consciousness cannot be reduced to brain brain is not consciousness as i have also tried to explicate this matter in my own haphazard or foolish way rather i mean in a much less bright way than mcticket does frankly but trying to put it across to you please try to understand this problem we simply dogmatically believe science must be right inquire into the argument that philosophers of science or those who are on the side of science on these matters give examine those arguments because if there is a causal relationship see if there is a causal relationship between my cerebral state between my brain state and my mental state called mental state of happiness mental state of envy mental state of sadness of jealousy of indifference of gloom of depression and so on so forth then i must first examine my brain state in order to know that i am this 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 on different occasions but i don't have to because consciousness is is an independent reality consciousness is a distinct reality it 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 may it may be causally not completely independent of the brain see i may be sad because my wife died not my not because my brain is functioning in a certain way see is because my brain function in a certain way that i grieve no there is an external cause so is there so is it the brain of my dead wife which is causing me which is causing me to grieve is the death of the person so let us try to systematically study things and draw distinctions important distinctions where they need to be drawn and then draw adequate conclusions which we think seem to follow from those all right